Welcome to the highlights of the second day's play in the second test between the Windies and England. The action coming from North Sound in Antigua. The Sir Vivian Richards Stadium surface was uh, covered with a lot of grass, but patchy grass at that. And it was a difficult pitch because there was a two-piece nature about it expected to continue into day two uneven bounce on there as well and coming into the second day's play the windies were in a solid position having bowled england out for 187 roach and gabriel doing the bulk of the work in the wickets column and then the windies 30 without loss still trailing though by 157 let's join darren ganga and michael afferton this is a hugely important day in the context of this series Welcome to Antigua, to the Sir Vivian Richards Stadium for the second day of this second test match. West Indies, of course, 1-0 up after that thumping win in Barbados, and they had much the better of the first day. Bowling England out for 187 on a spicy pitch, and then these two openers, Campbell and Brathwaite, did brilliantly late last evening to get through to the close unscathed. It was tough going. 30 for none in 21 overs, but don't worry about the run rate. Worry about the fact that England couldn't break through the opening partnership, despite the fact that Stuart Broad on screen there is back. Good morning, Michael. Good morning to all of our viewers. Yep, the Windies will be proud of their efforts on day one. They have the opportunity now to build upon that. Having said, first delivery, day two. It's Jennings who's just in front of square leg, but I don't think it carried as Brathwaite looked to clip away on the leg side. 31 for Nom. Lots of plays and misses. Uh, England produce the late stage uh, on day one. Yet again, another close call. Just falling short of Keaton Jennings. Substitute fielder. But we're just managing to keep it down. Pulled away by Campbell in the first boundary of the morning. It was a little short from James Anderson. Very good intent uh, early in his innings. Would have had the chance. Uh, see a lot of uh, what this surface has to offer yesterday afternoon first wicket to broad caught it slip campbell has reviewed it straight away he's looking to leave the ball england are convinced it came off bat campbell doesn't think so Um, a split screen here would be good, mate. I'll, um... yeah, clearly hit his elbow or his arm there, but I've just got to make sure that it hasn't touched his glove. Yep, happy. Yep, yep, yeah. That's that's conclusive for me. So I'll go back to Kumar. That um, Kumar, it's hit his arm, so it's not out. You overturn your decision. You're on the screen. Shows you how difficult batting remains on this pitch. Somehow Campbell survives that last ball, 36 for none. Well, he's judged a lot of deliveries outside the off stump. Very well. That one took off and went away. Good pace, good bounce. From Stuart Broad. Woof. Beautiful delivery from Broad. He holds his head up as if to say, how's he not edged that? It was very full. It was shaping away. Campbell drawn into the drive. Must have been close to the edge. Took a 
a bit of a piece out of the pitch as well. Oh, down. Down, third slip. Broad finally takes the edge. And it's Butler at third slip who has put down a very straightforward chance. It's not the first time we saw him put down Shimron Hepby in the first test match. He just sense that uh, it was a matter of time before Stuart Broad found the outside edge of John Campbell's bat. He did. Didn't get the support of his teammate, Josh Butler. Excellent batting, really good from Campbell. You can't just look at that one shot, you've got to put it all in context. Imagine what he's been going through the last dozen deliveries or so that he's faced from broad. He's been put down, the ball has gone past the edge, the occasional ball has shot through past his nose. So when he gets a chance to drive, to still have the presence of mind and the composure to put that away, excellent batting. Oh, up in the air. Was it going to land safe, best though? It does land safe, and, but, and Broad just can't believe it. And they're going to come back for another. And rightly so, he should feel frustrated, Stuart Broad. There's been an incident in every over his bowl at John Campbell, and this is the latest one. Top edge. Trying to pull a ball that wasn't short enough, and Johnny Bearstow, desperate effort, just can't quite get there. Well, it landed right between Moeen Ali, who was running in, and Johnny Bearstow, who was running in the other direction. The breeze helped. Um, Broad cannot believe what's going off out there. And he's been driven away beautifully. That is the shot of the morning, and that's the 50 partnership. But this was just overpitched. Campbell covered it, covering it nicely. Good for the Windies. That's three in a row now. One of their problem areas, three 50 partnerships in three innings. It's a good start from these two. And drives and flashes hard. Goes away for four. He went hard at that. There was that movement away as well. Not enough bat on it to get it over the slips. Oh, he's hit it over mid on. It's gonna bounce a few times and just trickle away for four. He's just looking to be aggressive. Always is John Campbell. And this shot is not totally out of character for him. Intentionally hit it back over the bowler's head. Edge this time gone. No mistake. And as ever, Stokes finds the breakthrough. Well, we sort of saw that coming. John Campbell has been having a lot of problems up at that end. And finally, Stokes gets one to take the outside edge no mistake this time and Stokes as usual makes a breakthrough and then pick up their first wicket it's John Campbell 47 it's 70 for one class player coming in at number three his stats don't reflect the talent that he's got 
of those 200s came in one match at Headingley against this opposition. Like that. And goes through everyone and goes away for four. Well, I don't think the pitch had much to do with that. Just a good delivery. 74 for one. lot after it goes past the stumps but Stokes using the breeze this time he doesn't try and bring it in at all something to watch as well is that Shea Hope's right foot doesn't move pitch you have to be strong mentally on what's that happened there now I reckon that's gone for four <laughs> what an Anderson. <laughs> Unbelievable, Anderson says. The two of them usually get on. I'm not sure they're speaking now. Brought Shimmy to throw, then went to shine it, then did throw. No one backing up. That's going to cheer him up. Soft hands, all the way down to third man from a forward defensive shot. Every time I see Sam Curran bowling, because of the type of bowler that he is, you're a former Surrey nine, aren't you? I look at that seam position and I think them, he must to continue working as a young bowler in that seam position. Well, that's in the slot. He's easy on the eye, Shea Hope, and that was an easy boundary to end the 37th over, 91 for one. Lovely shot. Over pips from Curran. Anderson can do nothing about that at mid-off. It's a nice drive from Brathwaite. West Indies, 103. 103 for one. Yeah, a lot of eyes on Sam Curran as well. This is a good shot. Again, his length gets too close to Brathwaite. Eyes on Curran for him to make a contribution with the ball in these conditions. Uses his feet nicely there. A wonderful drive through extra cover. Very different mindset by Bradway to what was seen in the subcontinent. Much more positive. Willing to use his feet as well. As on this occasion, finds the gap. And he's in good form. Fabulous morning session for the Windies. The bells are off. Time for the players to take a break, and it's uh, all Windies. 126 for one. They trail by 61. That's been an excellent session for them. A very solid session by the Windies. They go to lunch at 126 for one. Craig Brathwaite, very, very solid. 48 from 145 deliveries. The wicket to go was that of John Campbell for 47. 22 not out as well to Shea Hope. Ben Stokes, the man to get the wicket. He went past the edge on a number of occasions. So too, Stuart Broad, whose figures don't really reflect how well he bowled. It meant that the Windies were still trailing, but by only 61 runs at the interval. Yeah, Moen Ali's got the, the breeze, which will help his drift away from the right-handers, but essentially you'd think he'll do a bit of a holding job from that end. 
Lovely shot from Shea Hope. He is a very strong driver of the ball. He just lent into that and timed it down the ground. And he moves to 27. Yes, he gets a good stride in. It's right on top of the ball. again Craig Brathwaite on the verge of a half century has fallen to the off spinner that was just a hint of spin off the surface and Keaton Jennings on a substitute for Ben Folks has done the rest just that lapse in concentration they were making it very difficult for him to get that single made Nova before this one and just tickles it into the thigh pad and Jennings takes a good catch Moinali strikes and Craig Brathwaite for a well played 49 goes it's 133 now for two well the first thing to notice about Darren Bravo is that he's walked out in a cap which may be all very well facing Moinali but unless he's going to call for a helmet would seem to be a strange choice of headgear to face Stuart Broad on this surface. Firmly driven. Shea Hope looking good in this post lunch session. He moves to 39, West Indies 146 for two. something a little shorter and Shea Hope pouncing he's to 43 now and looking good one fifty for two picked up the length of that very early oh! Oh, and somehow he survived that England hold their head again. We have seen this throughout the day. It's a lovely reaction from the England close field as Bairstow, keeper, Stokes at slip, and even Jennings at short leg. Watch the reaction from him. Go on the stumps, please. <laughs> Look at Stokes. Hey. Yeah. Yes, gone. A fiddle outside off stump from Shea Hope. Finally, Broad gets his reward. Now, I reckon it was another one of those leg cutters. They can only miss them for so long. Boy, has he deserved that wicket. Remarkably, that's his first wicket. He should have had two or three. Was it another leg cutter? Yes, it was. Fingers down the side of the ball. Finally, he nicked it. Just staying leg side of it, Hope. That's what an up and down pitch does to you. Another contribution from Shea Hope against England ends on 44. 151 for three. So Roston Chase, who made 50 in the first innings in Bridgetown, and also, of course, took those eight wickets as West Indies won that test, is the new batsman. Dale in the gap. It wasn't just three slips, it was two and like a fourth, and it has gone straight between second slip and Joss Butler. Said all day, extra cover. They love this extra cover so you can pitch the ball up. You've got chases just come to the crease. 
on this pitch against your best bowler on this surface why when you have a man in there why do you need an extra cover seen it over the years he's just starting now one that bounced and left chase this one didn't again an attempted leg cut up it stays low and for a tall man that is a nightmare one up one down game on in the game chase goes for four 155 for four West Indies trail by 32 Shimron Hetmeyer is the new batsman he's smiling at the moment bags of potential bags of talent and comes in with a side in a mini crisis broad has his tail up two quick wickets how does he play it from here he counter punched in Barbados is that the right way to go here Last ball of the 60th over. Broad with two wickets in the over. 155 for four. Lovely shot down the ground. That's why I was looking at Bravo against Ali. You just cannot let Ali settle. You can't let England just rotate their four seamers at the other end. They're going to have to be positive against Ali. That's exactly what Bravo's done there. Catch! Edge, but through that gap wasn't a catch. It went straight down. You can row as much as you want. Extra cover, cover point, you're trying to bowl straight. Close that gap up. But reps, yep, not a good over from uh, Jimmy Anderson. Two leg sided uncharacteristically ill-directed 174 for four dropped it he was dropped in cover in that first test match i think he was only on three or four at the time by joss butler i think then they've put him down again well, it's rory burns diving away to his left it's a, a firm shot It's in, it's in, it's out. Jimmy Anderson was the unfortunate bowler at Kensington Oval too. And now it's squirted away for four. Anderson to say will not be a happy bunny. 179 for four. Well, that's a 22-year-old for you, driving to the offside. Big smile on his face. He plays the shot again. It would have been a good catch, but he'll be disappointed he didn't take it, Rory Burns. And then immediately after, flash down to third man for four. Would have been a good catch. Smacked it with the wind. No nonsense batsman, even enjoyed by those distracted swimming in the pool. Told you like to six. Now he comes alive. Just doesn't come out right from Moyne Allen. It sits up nicely. Look at him set himself. And Lee just won.
Catches the cry, will it land into no man's land? No, taken. Beautiful running catch by Jimmy Anderson. All of the athleticism and the skill to hold on. It had to be Anderson. He's been unlucky, just had one dropped off him. And he drop kicks the ball somewhere into the crowd. He makes great distance. Young fella has just hit a six. He fancies another. Now he's in trouble. Sprinting Anderson, 36-year-old Anderson. A wonderful diving, tumbling catch. That's how you catch him. Dangerous player. Shimron. Hetmeyer and he drop kicks the ball. Where's that gone anywhere? It doesn't matter. 186 for five. That's a good shot. Really nicely played. Dowrich, of course, 100 in Barbados. He'll be feeling in decent nick if you can on a surface such as this. He's flipped that off his hip nicely, 196 for five. Nice looking shot off the middle of the bat. He's haunted like a flash. When you're batting well, you're also very efficient in your foot movement. Beat second slip, valuable runs. Windy's lead goes to 15 now. Again, indecision. Machine Dorich. Just on that off stump line. Not sure if it's going to bounce or keep low. <laughs> Not done Ben Stokes' has moved uh, much good. Keaton Jennings has just thrown the ball to him and thrown it over his head or past him, so Stokes has had to walk back towards the boundary to pick it up. He's chuntering away. Mm, Stokes is going to be furious. It's another edge that has gone down to the third man boundary that can't be stopped. I think it's Denley coming round in vain. Boundary to finish the over, 206 for five. Himself, Joe Denley making his debut in Test match cricket. Not short of an effort on the field, diving away. Get it! Wow, that bounce again to complete the over. Had Dowrich in a spot of bother. Ends a terrific session and one in which England bounced back through Moen Ali and Stuart Broad, who took a couple of wickets apiece. The West Indies in a good position, leading by 25. Arich got out to a bouncer in Barbados, but off from a quicker bowler. Terrific session that was for viewers. Lots happening, four wickets falling. West Indies inching themselves into the lead, and the new ball now available straight after tea. England got themselves back into the contest at tea. 212 for five, the West Indies losing four for 86 in that middle session of the day. Number of batsmen getting starts 49 to Brathwaite, Campbell 47, Hope 44 as well. But it was Bravo not out on 18 and Dorich on 19 at the interval. Two wickets for Stuart Broad, who finally got into the wickets and he looked a real threat all the way through this bowling effort. One wicket to Stokes and two for Moen Ali, the spinner getting some bounce on the surface. It meant that the Windies were ahead by 25 runs. Anderson from the Andy Roberts end. 
swing and bounce. And that'll go for four. Off the thigh pad. Four nevertheless. Bat or pad, it doesn't matter. Total goes up four. Bounce is quite normally there. Now, what's that? That's a squeeze or a bump ball. Didn't see too much. I reckon that was just a bump ball. It's just Butler again. Gone this time, Anderson. Got to be really full on this pitch for LBW. They're going to think about it and review. Thank you. Yep, flat line, flat line. Yep, just go back again. Yeah, okay, fair. That's, I'm happy with that. That's, uh, yep, that's fine, a flat line. So we've got a ball tracking, please. No bad involved. Okay, ball tracking coming up now. Impact is in line and it's uh, going over the top. Just Chris. Uh, coming back to you, originals and out. You're over turning that to not out. Uh, you're on screen now. Big appeal this time. What's he going to give? Not out. Oh, they'll review this. <laughs> Has he hit it? Whoa! Um, nobody seems too eager to review that. Over the top. That's where he wants to be. Need a bit of luck on a surface such as this and against bowlers of the quality of Broad and Anderson with the new ball. You just got to hope you miss these. In the way that he's played, he's deserved a bit of luck. Darren Bravo today. Lovely shot. Lovely shot. Punch down the ground. Just a check drive. Yeah, not easy. All spitting and bouncing. From all to the back of your mind and get an opportunity to score. Try and do so, and this is a good positive stride from Dowich. Good straight back. That's a straightforward shot, but not when you think of what's been going on around. Yeah, lovely shot. He's driven down the ground, Anderson, and now he's just played a pull off the hip that even Gordon Greenwich would have been proud of. Yeah, Anderson, uh, Stokes, correction, kick the turf. At the, at the umpire's end there. I think he just felt there was nothing in this ball. It was a bit short, but there was no venom behind it. And, uh, Dowrich had all the time in the world just to pull it away. I think England feel Dowrich is a little bit iffy against a short ball, but it's got to be a proper short ball, bowl with effort. Oh, that's a beauty. That's a beauty. You just cannot play that from a length. And this pitch continues to produce absolute unplayable deliveries. Yeah, you're going to get the odd unplayable ball off this surface. And you've just got to hope that you either miss it or it misses you. This one kicked off a length, took the shoulder of the bat or the glove and just looped to Joss Butler, who's put down a couple of catches today, but wasn't going to drop that one. It just dollied to him. 
off the end of the finger or thumb. Not the first batsman to be wrapped on the knuckles in this game. And he won't be the last. He's played well, though. 31 from 67 to 36 for six. Man of the moment for the West Indies. Number one ranked all-rounder in the world. Jason Holder on the back of a fabulous double under. There it is. Best score, 202. Not out on his home ground. Thirty-six for six. Oh, he's gone a long way across, but I think it must pitch outside leg. It's going to be either a wicket or four leg buys. Called for a review. I thank you. That's um, just brought, come back there. I'll just confirm that that's missed the bat with Ultra Edge, please. Yep, thank you. Just go back for me, please. Yeah, just heard. Uh, it's only rumblings there. It's nothing, not bat. So oh, I'm happy to go to ball tracking when you're ready. Yep. Okay, impact is outside leg stump, so we'll be going back on field. The original decision was not out, so Chris will be staying with his decision. Chris, you're on screen now. Yeah, England have lost the review, and it should be four leg buys as well. Beautiful shot, Jason Holder. He is coming off an unbeaten double century. And backing it up. 250 up now for the Windies. Well, he's not going to miss out on the drive at a gentle pace. Here's that long reach. Nicely driven. And Jason hauled up. Might not get a boundary. Very good piece of feeling. Umpires will just check to ensure. And there was no contact with the advertising cushion. Long, long chase. Never say die. Another short delivery. Yeah, it's this short ball employee to Darren Bravo, and he, he evades that very well. Keep your eye on it. And he just sways out of the line. That's the thing that you've got to do there for young cricketers is keep your hands down. Three of the same. Great effort again from Stokes. Bravo's got a real good setup, a comfortable setup at the crease. End of the over, 2.59 for six. Well, that is wonderful effort from Stokes. He's 22nd overs, and he's steamed in there. An aggressive spell of bowling. In the air for a while, but past extra cover. Outfield is slow, and he get a couple. 262 for six. of pitch that you can hit through the line or on the up with 
a lot of confidence. Just makes him a bit more circumspect around about off stump. He'll need to soften his hands. Nice little turn as well from Moinali. Dokes wide, the crease goes for the big in swinger, overdoes it, and that will be four buys, I think. Yeah, five. Oh, that was an odd sink signal. That was four given. Could just be a four, but for some reason the umpire had five fingers up. Oh! Big block on the front foot, and he'll take a single. Jason Holder. And it's been an excellent day of test match cricket. The run rate has been low but it has been very, very watchable. Monumental physical effort from the England bowlers. Really, the day belonged to the mental effort of the West Indian batters. Old-fashioned batting and a club punch between Bravo and Stokes summed it up. Two sides going hard at each other, giving it everything, but it's nice to see that batters can still apply themselves in difficult conditions and that's exactly what the West Indies have done today. A really tough day of Test Match Cricket ends with the West Indies well positioned on 272 for six. You look at that batting card and think, well, a lot of guys got stats. Brathwaite faced a lot of deliveries for 49-47 to Campbell. 44 for Hope, the most fluent of all the batsmen. Bravo, 33 not out of 165 deliveries showed great character, as well as Shane Dorridge and Jason Holder, not out of 19. No faulting Jimmy Anderson's effort. Stuart Broad was superb. He could have had five or six wickets. He finishes the day with three for 42. Stokes, I think, also caused a lot of problems for all the batsmen he bowled to one for 58 and a couple of wickets for Moin Ali. What it means then is that the Windies ended the second day 85 runs ahead and the way that this pitch is playing out, that could be simply gold for them. Hope you've enjoyed all the action. It's goodbye from the Sir Vivian Richards Stadium.